Minor volcanic eruptions could cascade into a global catastrophe, according to experts. Researchers now are calling for a shift in focus away from risks of supervolcanic eruptions and towards likelier scenarios of smaller eruptions in key global pinch points, creating devastating domino effects on the supply chain. And this is based on the fact that, well, the world is changing. And currently, much of the thinking around the risks posed by volcanoes follows a simple equation. The bigger the eruption, the worse it will be for society and human welfare. Now, many fear mongers push this fact, but unfortunately, it is the rarest and most unlikely event to ever happen. But it will happen eventually. Far too little attention is paid to the potential domino effects of moderate eruptions in key parts of the planet that we're currently living. Now, researchers led by the University of Cambridge Center for the Study of Existential Risk, CSER, have identified seven pinch points where clusters of relatively small but active volcanoes sit alongside vital infrastructure that, if paralyzed, could have catastrophic global consequences. Now, these regions include, but are not limited to, groups in Taiwan, North Africa, the North Atlantic, and the Northwestern U.S., of all places. <laughs> now, the report is published today in the Journal of Nature Communications, and we just showed you that here. Even in a minor eruption in one of these areas that they identified could erupt enough ash or generate large enough tremors to disrupt networks that are central to the global supply chain. Clearly. And this even includes financial systems, including, according to Dr. Lara Mani from CSER, the lead author of the latest report. Now, at the moment, Calculations are too skewed towards giant explosions or nightmare scenarios. When the more likely risks come from moderate events that disable major international communications, trade networks, and transport hubs. This is true of earthquakes and extreme weather, as well as volcanic eruptions. The fact that volcanic eruptions are less frequent, well, nobody's talking about them. Now, Manny and his colleagues say that smaller eruptions ranking only up to VEI-6 on the Volcanic Explosive Index, rather than VEI-7s and 8s that tend to occupy catastrophic thinkings, could easily produce ash clouds, mud flows, and landslides that scupper undersea cables, leading to financial market shutdowns or devastating crops, uh, causing food shortages that result in political turmoil and riots or even worse. Now, we're, we're also talking global unrest and other uh, food riots and other things that will be happening that are, well, unforeseeable. Now, example, a small example of this happened recently, and we're talking about the 2010 eruption in Iceland, where a magnitude 4 eruption from Ea, a yokel volcano, close to the major pin pinch point of mainland Europe, saw plumes of ash carried on a northwesterly wind close to European airspace at a cost of about $5 billion to the global economy in just a few weeks. Hello! And that was a major perturbation to the entire system. Now, could you imagine three or four of these happening simultaneously, which is what the prediction we've been making for almost half a decade has been. Now, let's compare this to Pinatubo, shall we? Oh, and we just had the pictures up there. 
When Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted in 1991, a magnitude six eruption, much bigger, in fact, a hundred times greater in scale than the Icelandic event that we just showed you here, hundred times bigger. And yet we know that this event in Iceland cost $5 billion. Well, this event, which was 100 times bigger in scale than the Icelandic event, its distance from vital infrastructure meant that the overall economic da damage was actually less than a fifth of Eyjafjokull, less than a billion. Pinatubo would have global economic impact if around 740 million if it occurred in 2021. Still paling in comparison by a, a factor of seven from Eyjafjokull. So it all depends on where the eruption occurs and what it can affect. So size doesn't matter. And thank you, ladies, we know. So a smaller eruption in a key area could disrupt the global supply chain in ways that a VEI 6 or 7 in Indonesia would have no effect. Now, seven pinch point areas were identified by the experts within which relatively small eruptions could inflict maximum global mayhem. And all of these areas are on alert, are currently erupting in some way, and we've been watching them. So that means the S, well, the shit's about to hit the fan, folks. And not in a big way, but in a minor way, which will have maximum impact on, on the global supply chain including the volcanic group in the northern tip of Taiwan on the Ring of Fire. Yes, home to one of the largest producers of electronic chips. If this area, along with the port of Taipei, gets struck, let's say it was indefinitely incapacitated. The global tech industry could grind to a halt, and there are hundreds of volcanoes in that region to make that happen. Another pinch point is in the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean. Do you know how many ships go through this region? Whew. I have only begun to understand. Where legends of the classical world, such as Vesuvius and Santorini, could induce tsunamis that smash submerged cable networks and seal off the Suez Canal while killing tens, if not hundreds of thousands instantly. We saw what a six-day closure of the Suez Canal due to a beaching of, of a so-called freighter did earlier in the year when a single stuck container ship cost tens of billions of dollars a week in global trade. What about a VEI 5.6 from Santorini that blocked shipping for weeks? Now, eruptions in the U.S. state of Washington in the Pacific Northwest could trigger mud flows and ash clouds that blanket Seattle and run down the rivers, killing hundreds of thousands of people, shutting down airports and seaports. Scenario modeling for a magnitude six eruption from Mount Rainier alone predicts, predicts a potential economic loss of more than $7 trillion over the ensuing five years for just a tiny region of a few hundred square miles which would literally bankrupt the U.S. instantly. The highly active volcanic centers along the Indonesian archipelago, where there are thousands, if, if not tens of thousands of volcanic vents, from Sumatra to central Java, also the line of the Strait of Malacca, one of the busiest shipping passages in the world with 40% of global trade traversing the narrow route each year. What if that got shut down? The Luzon Strait in the South China Sea, another key shipping route, is the crux of all the major submerged cabling that connects China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea. It is also encircled by the Luzon Volcanic Arc, which, if it erupts, could sever the connection. The researchers also identified the volcanic region straddling the Chinese-North Korean border. Holy macaroni. From which plumes of ash would disrupt the busiest air routes in the east. A point 
that would be reawakening the Icelandic volcanoes would do the same in the West. It's time to change how we view extreme volcanic risk. We're not looking for the doomsday VEI-8 that darkens the sun and creates global winter. What we are looking for is the much highlier probable minor event that does something that we just reported on, a disruption in the major pinch points of the global system of financial, food, and infrastructure trade. Thinking in terms of colossal eruptions destroying the world, as portrayed in Hollywood films, is, well, not necessary. The more probable scenarios involve lower magnitude eruptions, interacting with our societal vulnerabilities, and cascading us towards catastrophe in a Mad Max world, which we've warned you about. World Wide Volcano kind of News updates show us that Marapi, Shivalush, Reventador, Pavlov, Nevadosti Chilan, Sabankaya, Semisopochnoi, and many others are awakening. Are you ready? We are. And we hope you join us. Prepare with the ranch.com for long term food storage needs now. This is not the only prep you need, but it gives you peace of mind for up to a month while the grid goes down and your food is well spoiling because there is no electricity. You can get a month supply of food for just $222 at a discount. Right here, if you have four people that you're trying to save, that's a week of food immediately. All you need is hot water. Cold water will work as well. That's a boom to knowledge. We need to start thinking outside of the box and more realistic scenarios that will be coming true in the years that are coming. We're not bumming. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in the future that we are living now. Prepare with the ranch.com. And be safe. We love each and every one of you. Stay tuned for our morning update and more boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to get up to speed. And we love you.